and I love it. Yeah, there's so many cool things that they could have learned, uh, you know, in the night before between these games as That's well, like additional setups. So we'll have a look and see what we will discover early on here. And it looks like Mummy is going to get some early information out of B main. And he will see a couple players get a tag there, and that's a, a pop of some utility there, Nano Swarm, to get that B main control. So C9 just creating presence, but on, again, both both extremities, which really makes things rather confusing for Envy. You can see Envy has given up all map control here. They're playing effectively, just they're just relying on their sight holds, they're, and, and they're just giving up everything else. Yeah. And this is what they did uh, previously as well against C9 on Ascent. They, uh, C9 could not crack the egg of how to get into B because look at all the utility that's been placed. They got the turret further up. They have Nano Swarm laid out. Uh, the But uh, let me see. Did they also play a Trapwire too? They didn't play the Trapwire mid. Huh. This, this is really interesting. So far, Envy are play, playing a really cool denial game of information. Again, they've given up all this space, but C9 have seen one player so far, and it's 30 seconds left to plant the spike. They've only seen A Cypher on the A side. They have no information. They're going for a rotation back to the B side, but they're blind, and we can see that this might not be the best decision for them. No, this isn't going to pan out all that well. I mean, they have to know that there's going to be all this utility at B, but, and I think that's part of the reason why you're seeing them just play this one out slowly. Mitch is going to make some noise now. Now the recon bolt it's going to give them the in intel that they are looking to push this one here is now they're only going to have a few seconds remaining before they make this happen a big recon is going to give them all the intel look at the nano swarm just shredding through as Akis comes around the corner and envy played their cards close to their hand and it worked that was such an awesome pistol because this is something that we saw that c9 did really effectively against sentinels on split yesterday it's this idea of just we're going to play really slow and passive and we're not going to give you any information yeah. and so for C9 to really know what's going on they have to commit harder than they were in the early and mid rounds yeah. and that as we can see it's actually quite difficult to do that on the pistol so that's a great pistol round from Envy I don't think I've seen anyone play it quite like that just yet and now we're going to see them with that first round lead beautifully done played their hand close to their chest that's what I was looking for we got there eventually all right now as Envy is going to look to change things up, maybe take a little bit of space here uh, on long on A site. But all that utility, once again, everything's just going to be played out. And this, uh, so th the smoke might give Envy an idea that they're looking to push into mid or, or at least have some kind of presence in mid. Given that their only real option here is to play close because they're all going to be using classics. And they're checking their corners here. Calypso, he's looking to maybe nail a fat paranoia, but mummy, the drone, okay. <laughs> Slap that drone with a knife. Okay, Ten's looking to open up things with the Leer, and that will be the contact through the dark cover. There's that paranoia in response you were talking about, and that's going to, I mean, C9 don't have really much utility or anything to speak of to help them in this round, and it's already what they were trying to do to enter trees already been countered, so it's looking a bit awkward here. The marshal there from Caboose is in position behind the glass too, and Mami's also going to get a nice little push there towards a main to pick off one, so nobody with two quick kills, maybe there's a chance to get a spike plant. This could get a little bit out of hand here, We'll have to see if Envy can recover. They are in a 3v3 retake. Oh, and ends up losing a fight against Tens. Tens with that Sheriff round two is going to be very deadly. And also, I would imagine, it's going to be overhealed too. So now, while I was looking a little bit dire, Envy wasn't giving a lot of information. C9 now in a 2v3. Tens is still going to be alive. All three players located inside of the scaffold underneath Heaven. So Hell is what you can call that there. Zekis is going to push up now. He's looking for the turret. It's going to cause a little bit of a distraction. Caboose is going to try and fly in here. Doesn't land the shot, but Akis does manage to find one. Looking for the second, and there's Shinobi. And Tens, as that kill came in, he went right into that uh, invulnerable state where he was able to just get out of there and reposition and focus the fire on the Shinobi. Yeah, that was really nice from C9. Again, we see time and again, we talked about this yesterday, C9 is a team that buys the Sheriff onto Tens for a reason. It's because not just because Tens is a god, but because Tens is playing the Rainer. So Tens can, you know, overheal, can, you know, phase out and just uh, basically reposition if he can get that one kill. And he's so reliable at doing that that those rounds are always worrisome if you're, if you're playing against C9. And you might have to actually take more initiative to deal with those in the future. But... It's another point for later. We'll have to see if, if uh, NB can do the same to C9 as was just done to them. We can see Caboose lurking out towards Cat with a Sheriff of his own. You've got to feel like it's going to be a lot more difficult though for the defenders to find the engagements they want 
in a round like this versus the attackers, you get to select which site they want to go to. Here you're at the mercy of where the attackers want to go. It's that camera. It's going to give him a lot of info. Okay, so they know exactly where Tens is, but Vice, right out of the gate, does manage to find one. Caboose, is he going to be on fire today like he was the previous day? The big flash comes in, but Ooh. Shinobi sprays Caboose down. Calypso, though, popping up from behind. He was there by Wine, and Vice was unaware to it. Ends up getting caught. This is a problem. Right now, C9 need to be decisive, and you can see they're going to walk through. To, so they can either go to the high ground, or they can just wrap to spawn. They have a lot of time, so they could still go spawn to B, trying to catch a player out, and they'll find Finesse. And they know there's one on the side. Clips obviously revealed his position. They don't know where Mitch is, though. So we'll have to see. Oh, sorry, Akis. So we'll have to see exactly how they handle this. Indeed, taking the high ground. I like that a lot. And now it's just down to Clips. So they know that he's here, so they could play it super safe, but they'll just drop and finish him off. Nicely done by C9. They'll lose two players, but all things considered, I think they're extremely happy with how this start has, has gone, given that they lost the pistol. Yeah, and it, I think the credit definitely has to go to Tens there because you know, he gets Sheriff kill over heals. He has confidence now to push onto site. Just a lot of things that C9 are doing so right here on their attacks. Also, though, uh, one thing I do want to note is that uh, this, this battle between Calypso and Vice that's been happening on A, like Calypso has gotten the uh, better of Vice. Uh, I believe uh, it was one fight that took place, and it was another one where they were going for Orb. Uh, so I think they're just going to want to be very careful about that and how they play A. They, they can't be too, uh, they can't be, uh, too like, free will with that. They, they need to like put some fear envy. I think and this is exactly what they're doing. They're putting presence. They're forcing him into a bad position now, and this is already just going to pay off here. As even though they lose Shinobi, that's going to be fine. Ten's still alive, still a problem. Yeah, we see the dark cover from Calypso on the on the box there to kind of create this sort of one-way advantage. But C9 happy to fight over the A main control. They'll win it, taking that frag there. And that's a really big problem. Usually, if you, you could slow down the round now if you're the attackers, even though it's 4v4, you'd expect that the, the uh, defenders might in a position like this, try to get some info, try to start rotating, try and start find a way to you know have that knowledge as to where the attackers want to finish. And Calypso is at the back of the site. The paranoia is going to hit him. He has a paranoia of his own. If he can time this well, maybe he can pull out some shenanigans here to really ruin C9's day. But uh, C9 just rolled the site over completely. Yeah, and I think he wanted to maybe wait until his teammates got there so that he could play the paranoia. But even then, because he had no real opportunity to try and follow up with that. Uh, it was a rough, rough situation. They're going to save this op as well as the Phantom. The money situation not looking good for Envy. They'll concede three in a row. Uh, just a clean take on the A site. They, they know that B is going to be really challenging to do, so they'll be more than okay to take that scramble at A early on. And getting the kill quickly against Caboose, that just set the tempo for the round, DDK. Absolutely. And, and I think that A main dynamic at the beginning of the round, you know, we have to put our focus on that. Again, one thing I haven't seen that I would have liked to have seen more of, and we see it in Europe quite a lot, is full gelato takes from the defenders, where it doesn't just stop at A main, but you, tr you mm -hmm. really take away everything. And that creates a lot more problems for the attackers, because they have to retake that position later on, as you as the defenders can just leave some oh, that hurts. there. And that, yeah, absolutely. That's a big pickup. That's huge. And... Well, we'll have to see what MV can cobble together then, given the fact that they just lost two really valuable weapons. You know, though, this this one way that they played uh, actually was the worst thing to happen for uh, for Envy. Uh, it makes me wonder if they're just going to go for the more strict uh, gelato take and and try and, and like maybe in later rounds, maybe not this one. Or it looks like they are stacking. And the reason why is because if they get vision like tens, he's in a position where he's never going to be targeted, right? So if they tag him, he's screwed. Like he just sprays through this, and no one, no one really knows where he is. Yes, yeah, difficult to deal with. We'll see though. This sheriff push he could do some damage, but again, that smoke's really annoying. It's it's helpful for envy in some respects to allow them to get close, but it also makes life a little bit difficult to go further. As we can see, it, it works against them. They can't actually push the choke point, Ooh. and they'll fall back after getting no kills. And they didn't really get info either. So C9's slow pace here has really denied what Envy were looking for at the beginning of the round, which was an early pick with the Sheriffs. And now they've rotated to Catwalk. And they may be able to catch 10s out here, but it's 10s. So it's quite the task catching him off guard. Yeah, but he's at 61 HP. A big kill here gets you a Phantom. No one is around to really try and respond to that. Perhaps the players that were going to be working on B main, but they're so focused on this area here. And he will have to back away. 
Oh, Akis around the corner. A lot of confidence, Finesse. He bails out of this, and Shinobi's looking to try and see if he can end this. And playing this one real subtly was Finesse, but unfortunately for him, Relics was going to creep to corner. Does get tagged, though, as he approaches the site. Got four members of Envy now knowing that they're going to have to make this retake happen. Tens is going to be coming up from the rear. And then don't forget about Vice, who's uh, going to be all the way on the flank. I don't even think it's really going to matter all that much. Clean kill from Calypso, but Shinobi was there for the follow-up. Cloud9 continue to add on to their wins here. Yeah, Relic's definitely a hero in that round. Uh, one thing that I think is interesting to note, too, is that in, in rounds like that, where the, the guys on the pistols, that Envy, they're looking for the right kind of information to tell them, to give them the tell as to where their opponents are going to go so they can stack the right site. Now, in this instance, when you're up against something like that, you want to try to make things confusing. You don't want it to be that your Cypher is always the one that lurks so that when they see your Cypher, they're like, well, we know that the team, the enemies are on, um, if we see Cypher here, all of his teammates on the other side of the map. Yeah. So we sometimes we're going to see tens lurking. Sometimes we'll see, you know, maybe a different agent lurking. And so I like that from C9. They run it back there to get that A main info, and that's actually going to give Envy some early control here. It's not that contested, but C9 can retake this in the mid phase of the round for cheap. Yeah, they invested a whole bunch into this now. So Mame with this drone should allow them to be able to push up here. Also, he's going to clear out that trap wire, which is wonderful. It's a huge tell that there's a trip there, too. Suggests so that C9 aren't interested in retaking that position. So that means that Envy can just rotate their players all the way off of that. And But then the mind games can start. C9 will realize that that trip is gone so that they could play against that. That's the mind games, man. It's always the mind games. And then, furthermore, uh, you also have that fear that Vice is just always going to have to be there. Now, the Killjoy ult is going to be coming through to just try and detain and control. Uh, but... Yeah, they swing this one. So that was just beautifully done there uh, at the perfect time, right? When you think that they're not going to be doing anything and Mummy is going to get at least one target but does not find himself the second, unfortunately, for him. Now, though, it leaves it down just just two members. You got Finesse and Akis, the last two still standing here for Envy against four players for Cloud9 as Mitch approaches on the flank here. Ends up getting the kill which is a real big plus for them. I think they're going to be okay with that. They can disengage and give this round up, hold on to their weapons. I really love the use of the lockdown there from C9. I think they're so well thought out, as opposed mm -hmm. to just using it to just clear a site. It's actually more guaranteed to clear out one of the two positions that you need to split a site. But in this instance, what we can see is that that lockdown, not only does that cover the position that you need up catwalk, the tree position, to split the A site, but it also um, covers spawn and market. So it, basically from that lockdown, C9 could be doing a, setting up for a B split or an A split. And there's two options they have. They can either use the clearance of the lockdown to move all of their players through those positions to attack one of the two sites, or they could actually stack, let's say, A main or B main, knowing that the players, um, that, knowing that, uh, that that area will not be not have any defenders in it because it's too risky too for the defenders to go all the way out to take down the the ult so that's actually i think one of the coolest usages yeah. and what most consistent usages of that ult that i've seen and even uh, at that moment when i'm trying to i'm drawing a blank on what was i want to say it was caboose uh when he was looking to take control of the tree back as soon as the detained timer was coming down like you would anticipate that the player is going to start to make the move inside of that area that you were locking down so the swing coming in at the you know two seconds remaining like it's just all those as you had hi highlighted the mind games right that we're seeing from all these players yeah, they're trying to force mistakes they're trying to bait out utility they're trying to get any edge they can they're completely right it's making it very hard to know what's going on for envy envy are really struggling here to win the, the early to mid round phases of these these gun gun rounds and we're seeing a different look from C9 pretty much all the time they've given up that A main uh, pressure they look like they want to just go for that hit onto the B site but there is a lockdown from Akis that is ready to go however we can see how close the attackers are if they're explosive enough they could get onto the site and just deal with that immediately so this this is going to be tough for Envy despite the fact that we're likely going to see the ult dropped and we've got Caboose on the rotate too into spawn so it feels as though Envy have this info Leading towards that B site now, and C9 looking to get the hit going imminent, imminently. All right, well, they're going to get rid of some of that utility. Nano Swarm has been used to try and prevent them from being able to push up as Finesse and Akis are going to be working this angle. Also looking to get shots inside of these corners here. Caboose, he stays alive in the backfield, finds one. 
Finesse, though, not good enough for him. Neither is going to be Caboose here as he comes out of the defender side. Mummy's Hunter's Fury. Oh, it's going to connect. Actually, one and... Oh, man, he connected one against Relics, and he's also going to bang up Shinobi. Oh, dear. Tens is alive, though. That's always a problem. That's a great connection from Mummy. But again, as we said, Ten's still alive. Some of these players... For C9, not. I don't think Mummy's so he's not oh. too sure as to where they're going to be. That is perfect timing from Tens, and Vice finishes off Calypso, who went to try to trade that kill. The Vice was ready to pull the cover, and oh, Alex, I think I think that lockdown, the placement of it, I, I think it just got spammed through the wall. I think it was too easy to detect that it was like right on the corner of the site, and we just just got the spam, and it was just useless. Yeah, they removed that instantly. Uh, some stats that I think would be fun for people to kind of mull over. Uh, when these two teams played on Ascent last, Envy won their defensive half, the first half, 10 to 2. Wow. It, look at the <laughs> stark difference that we're seeing here, the contrast between what happened in that first game. That was game two, mind you, uh, to now. And I, that's why I felt pretty confident regarding Cloud9 on Ascent. It seemed like it's putting a lot of work in it. And you can also tell, too, that uh, they weren't prepared for that full lockdown that Envy were bringing in that last game versus now they are they're doing a good job of just uh, wrestling that utility away from Envy and then uh, going for the hits when they need to. So we have Envy doubling down on this cat control. He lost Caboose. He was spammed through. He couldn't even make the play he was looking for. That's yeah. a pretty huge problem. Tens is going to ask questions of Cat Walker as he moves a bit closer. So they seem to realize that Envy are playing all these engagements around middle. And it looks like Relics will take down Finesse. So Envy are just getting picked apart one by one. Another great... I mean, that was a Paranoia and a Leer to take down Calypso. So five versus two. There's nothing left of Envy at this point. They wanted to get aggressive in mid, but it it just looks so lackluster against D9. Yeah, they just didn't have the weaponry to try and deal with this as well. Last player left alive. It's going to be Akis for Envy, and this kill is going to be coming in cleanly around the corner. Relic's got four kills in that round. Nicely done by Cloud9. Already you can see the results of watching that tape back and applying what they've learned in that last series has been paying off. Maybe Envy just need a couple best of threes before they can, you know, get, get going. Maybe like three or four, uh, you know, <laughs> field threes before the day starts. That was a uh, rough day for Envy. Nothing, 100% something that you commend Envy for is the fact that they played Valorant from 9 a.m. all the way until like 5 p.m. Pacific time. That's just insane that they were able to do that and make it this far in this competition. They're, they're not out of it, not by a long shot. Although Cloud9 has figured out a recipe for success here on Ascent, there's still plenty more to come. This is going to be Cloud9's pick as well, by the way. Mummy's going to start this off. Now, one thing we didn't touch on before the round started, uh, Dan, is that we have two ops. Envy do like to go to this. They'll bring out the two ops from time to time to try and see if they can hold down some of these lanes and prevent some movement from happening. And Sinan, after losing that early player in B main, they are forced to commit somewhere together. They don't want to keep defaulting and risk losing another player and being in a 3v5. So they play off of the only position they really had info on at this point when they lost their player, which was a main here. Of course, their Cypher was looking after this position. There was no aggression here, so they can likely assume that Envy do have a setup on the site or ch or in the tree position. So all they have to do is just run utility, and oh, we are going to get an ult there, I think, into the Hunter's Fury, potentially. And He's going to stick it. He stuck the TP, so Relic ends up getting the kill from behind. That is just beautifully done, DDK. Now, though, the response is going to come through. Relics is still going to be up here. He's still going to be a problem. Such a good old. Oh no, Mummy had to hit that one. And maybe he'll get another shot at this one. But C9 R2 against four here, but he still has some position to work off of. But never mind. Envy finally pick up the round. And, and as you say, we see these Hunter's Fury. Uh, like, if you can have an ult, that'll make a lot of noise. Orbital Strike, it works really well too. If you can TP behind that uh, with Omen, it can be really sick for a sight take. And given that they were four versus five, I think it was it was a pretty good shout to burn that burn those ults, considering that they still have they still have some some you know a lot of money to to play with in the following rounds. Relics is 14 for six. He's having a great game on Omen. He, he, yesterday he was huge. He he had two of the oh, very man. important clutches on Split against against Sentinels. I was wondering when Relics was going to become that difference maker. The second sign player for Cloud9 always was receiving high praise every single time we saw him play. And uh, it just makes sense. And him, he used to be the Phoenix for this team. And ever since shifting over to the Omen, I think it's just taken a little while for him to get comfortable with that role. But since then, he's been stupendous. Although as they look to take some...
presence here at B-Main. They use a paranoia to accomplish that, by the way, so that they can get further up ahead. Yeah, and and Sealand have to respect that when Envy aren't uh, pressing on A-Main at the very beginning of the rounds, they have to they have to respect that and, and play a little bit slower because it means that Envy could be doing something elsewhere on the map. So they want to just be sure that that's not the case before they start to make their own uh, movement, which is why at the one minute mark, we're seeing the mid take coming into fruition. Oh. Vice though, goes a little bit deep there. That's a great timing found by Envy. We, we get that mid round timing for the information play. They get that pick on of, of a one player on the extremity and now they can maybe have an advantage. This will force C9 to commit to a site. Oh, but they can't go into, uh, into B, it looks like. The, the Killjoy ult has been dropped. Yeah, and they're going to just hold this one off. Calypso has the flank around the corner. He's got this thing angled out. That is just a great use of detain because that's just more stall, more delay. You're, you're playing, you're giving Cloud9 limited time to work with while at the same time you're trying to take a little bit more space here as well. Calypso has to back away that ball. Oh, he went back in again, and I think he thought that maybe with the angle that he would not have been caught out there with that... With that Leer, it ends up not being the case. Mitch is also going to pick up an op in process, and that is going to cause a lot of problems here. And now they're going to be able to get onto the site. But they have to worry about Akis. Akis, no! He went for the wrong player. He actually could have just snuck up, gotten the kill at the player at the double boxes. FNS, he has 7 HP, he has no choice. He has to save this op. The round goes to Cloud9. Oh, C9 is so sick at these very slow rounds. They they were waiting out that entire uh, lockdown in in spawn with I think it was less than 20 seconds left before they decided to which site to run and to. And even though they delayed it, it still worked to Cloud9's benefit because they like playing like that. They they had they had after the I think they had one second spare when that spike went down. That is insane. That went down to the smallest margins and they went to the, the most heavily defended site. Had they chosen to go towards A up through up through the the high ground, they only had one player to worry about, which was finesse. Yeah. So that, that would have been the better option. They couldn't have known that. But um, I think maybe they assumed with the lockdown towards B that it would be less defended, uh, possibly. But ultimately, insane that C9 is so good in these situations. There's 17 seconds left when they get that pick. 12 seconds right now. Yeah. 10 seconds, they're not even in the site yet. It's so crazy how close this was. And then Akis went for that kill in 10. And he'll turn around and punish that one in a heartbeat. Had he just gotten that one pick there, FNS on the other side of the map, 10s had no other options. Envy wins that round, uh, you know, but coulda, shoulda. That's uh, that's just how the, you know, how the cookie crumbles. Now, as we move on here to our next round of play, we only have two rounds left in the half. Envy, big difference from what we saw in the first time that these two teams met on Ascent, where Envy were dominating, trouncing Cloud9, round after round after round because of the way they locked down B, DDK. This time yeah. around, C9, they. It, they've just been money. Yeah, I like that we've, we've seen C9 as well, just so, sort of switching up the pace. At the beginning of the at the, the gun rounds, we saw them contesting with MV around A main. And interestingly, even though I would say C9 were generally getting the better of that exchange, they decided to start just you know using their Cypher towards that position just to look after it and make sure that MV didn't make any pushes all the way around to mid. And instead, C9 started to find advantages playing, going for that slow style and playing a lot more delay, playing into that delayed mid take and just working the positioning of the map. And I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that Envy are playing really passively. Yeah. And so C9 is saying, well, you know, inf instead of just having these early engagements where maybe we get the worst of that, let's just take, let's get, the, let's get that consistent slow take of position, 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 mm -hmm. and then they can make those calls right with like 20 seconds left as we saw, and their opponents don't know where they're going to go. So they get small advantages by doing that. So I'm liking that C9 can rely more on the macro strategy than the gun play. Play. Yeah. And this is one of the things that C9 have impressed me with and why I picked them is because when we saw them against Sentinels, that's also how they were beating Sentinels on a map yeah. like Split. Yeah, it's, it, it really has been awesome to watch Cloud9 evolve as a team throughout uh, all of the Ignition series from the beginning where I think... It, Unfortunately, uh, they was kind of like memed on, right? Like, what's going on with tens and friends? What new friend is going to be joining them today? To seeing how this roster has really evolved. Now, I uh, just want to give uh, everyone an update as to what's going on. It is a tech pause, and the reason being is because one of the players, uh, don't know who, but one of the players lost power uh, at their home. So we'll hopefully be able to resolve that relatively soon. Um, oh, Mitch. We were just told Mitch affected by thunderstorms. So, oh, no. all right, man. You know, and Mitch, we all know that Mitch likes to bring the thunder. <laughs> Am I right? I feel proud. Thank you so much, Dan. <laughs> really appreciate it. At least I have one person clapping for me. No audience here. If this was, uh, if we were, if we had an audience, I'm, I'm sure everyone would be groaning right now. Uh, so, DDK, now that 
it feels like Cloud9 have, and I don't, I don't know how much they had to prep regarding uh, this match, considering that they went to war against Sentinels yesterday. Um, but the recovery on Ascent has been so impressive. Like, they they look like on their defensive side that they couldn't figure out what to do at all. Like, it was like they were just stumped the whole time. And and, and even though Cloud9, they did that whole, like, well, we're going to wait this one out. We're going to try and play for information, you know, make incremental uh, improvements or, or, or pushes, like, little by little by little. And then, boom, we go in for the push. Uh, now this time around, they don't – you can tell that they respect B-Main. They're not trying to – oh, I'm on your side. Uh, they're, they're not trying <laughs> okay. to uh, get inside – of B main traditionally, they're instead they're they're doing different things. They're coming from the defender side. They're coming from market. There's been a lot of adjustment on their end. Yeah, and it's the one thing I re so one of the problems that I think Envy are having here is that they aren't understanding or finding ways, or maybe they don't they haven't re done the drills that they need to in their practice, the scrims, to find a way to take. Uh, agency on one area of the map. B mains kind of can be difficult. We can see that you can have those smaller exchanges, but as soon as you go into the lobby and towards like mid link, things can get a little bit difficult because yeah. it's such a wide open space. And then if you look at mid, well, mid is a, there's so many different angles. Mid is kind of a nightmare. I think it's actually a big complaint for a lot of people. They mm -hmm. feel very uncomfortable with mid. So you're kind of left with gelato as this one area as the defenders, and I've been mentioning it, that you can take away with a set piece mm -hmm. because you can take that A main control. That's not too difficult. And then kind of expanding, you know, using your utility into gelato. There's only like, a, you know, a couple angles you can worry, you need to worry about. So you can have those set pieces of utility and yeah. the coordinations to take that away. And then once you've taken that away, what you can do is you can leave a player there, or maybe you can just uh, force the enemy team to have to, now that, you know, you've destroyed their cypher trips and all the rest of it, let's say if they just had a cypher there, now, now they have to worry about you having that. So all of a sudden, as the defenders, you put, oh, oh, well, I have to finish that point in a moment because we're right back into it. And it, it looks, looks like Mitch's power is on. That's so good. That, I, I, when you said Thunderstorm, I'm like, oh my god, that could be hours. <laughs> you know, it could be <laughs> days. Oh boy, okay. So they're changing up where they're actually putting some of this utility, by the way. Uh, they are putting Alarm Bot in mid. Uh, they also put Turret there, too. Uh, still going to have these Nano Swarms out, and we also have a Lockdown in effect here. They're going to have to push this. No players have been detained, so they'll just hang this back now as Caboose is going to wait for them to push forward. But Shinobi's there to respond in turn. Akis is also going to get dinked up a little bit. 73 HP. Calypso gets picked oh. from the flank, and that alarm bot did not. He went right around it and was able to kill Akis. And you know that he's going to be very frustrated with that, considering where he placed that alarm bot, but how he was able to get around it. This now has spike down, clear, cloud nine. They'll win this round, no problem. Absolutely. It's, it's a really nice take from C9 using that Killjoy ult. We've seen that they've got had a few different looks on that. And uh, once again, it's just Finesse on the lonesome. See if he can keep himself alive, keep the gun alive. I'll, I'll take this moment just to finish the previous point. The point is effectively that as the defenders, you're looking for ways to force your opponents to do something. Mm -hmm. Once you take, let's say, a huge uh, portion of the map, basically they have to be like, oh, oh, oh god. Now they know precisely where we are. We either have to retake that position to remove that info because it allows them to stack more favorably on the site we are going to attack. or And, and so we have to do something um, over there or we have to go faster towards where yeah. we're already going. So it forces the attackers to have to play to your tune. And that's kind of the point here. Right now, C9 are able to play to their tune as much as they like and Envy are struggling to find ways to to really uh, pressure C9 early in the early and mid rounds. Yeah, the, the adaptation force uh, Envy hasn't been as prevalent. Uh, the only thing that I think they've been really successful in has been this here, the uh, A main play to try and take space. Now, Mummy does get a tag on one player, and that's just going to be Shinobi. But here they go. They push forward. And uh, just as I say that this was the only area where they were finding success, Cloud9's like, really, Golden Boy? We'll just go ahead and take this ourselves. And they managed to do so with authority as that Leer pushes him forward. Caboose just got completely caught out. It's just a surprise of that Leer, right? It's not yeah. something that you normally would expect to play against. No one else in North America plays Reyna, and no one's playing it the way that Tens is playing it. So he's taking a lot of confident fights. Oh, he Ooh. has Relics pass Akis there, like ships in the night through the dark cover. That's unusual. And I was going to say, they can just hold for Relics to make a play now, but they Tens did pick up an extra kill, and this is, they're just going to roll into the site with it. 
So it's looking like this round is over, but this is clean, man. This is the final round. I mean, so it's, it's basically a wrap at this point. Akis has no other choice. He has to go for a play, but the Nano Swarm, the little robots, are going to eat him alive, and that is going to be the half. Cloud Nine on attack looks so good, and now they just need to get three rounds on the defense, and it's two pistols, and you're basically right there. Yeah, and we kind of saw that point around A main and Gelato play out, where the the defenders try to take some presence there but they, they, they don't do enough. Like, you need yeah. to do more. Yeah, it was the only area where they were, like, getting into, and you could see that there was, like, some confidence there, but also it was because C9 never really invested anything into it. Exactly, so the one yeah. time they decided to invest, Caboose is like, wait, what? There's a le Okay, and then he's dead. It's, yeah, it's really cheap for, for the attackers to just retake that. So, well, we will see if there is a recovery to be made in the second half. Great attacking side from C9. We didn't really see too much in the way of responses from Envy, but perhaps on their attacking side, they'll be able to respond in kind. We'll get the early utility thrown into be main by Sova just to delay any rush timings, if there was to be any. Also to allow them to drop the cam in the, in the B main position, which does afford them some options to get that info later on. And more pressure towards B main, so they want to try to find this cam. So, so applying pressure here can actually help them to remove that cam and allow them to, to um, make it very unknown as to what they are doing. They need to try to deal with that cam. They know. I think they heard that it went down, and I think they're trying to force a trigger of it so they can find it. But yeah, but he didn't bite. He did not bite. That camera is still going to be alive. Now, Envy looking to take uh, maybe some information, also. Take some of that utility away in mid, which is always going to be a plus. Yeah. And now the cam's activated because of the noise, and now they rotate towards A because they have the info. But is it quick enough, Alex? That's the question. Well, they're going to have to fly. With Tens manages to pick up one kill, but Calypso is going to swing onto that one, leaving Mitch all by his lonesome here underneath scaffolding. Shinobi, though, is going to join the action, but will end up getting bodied there in the process. Mitch still alive, but with two players he has to deal with here. Three now. Everyone basically just wanted to kill Mitch. And it's all up to Vice, a 1v3. As he approaches on high rafters here, heaven, scaffold, whatever you want to call it. I think they maybe saw him. I'm not too sure about that. No, they're playing like they did not see him briefly. Would have imagined that that would have been the case. It would have held that angle. But now they'll get the intel as to where he's located. And this is basically going to be easy pickings here at this point, unless Vice, who has been amazing the entirety of Pop Flash, but... As great as you are when you jump into some bullets like that, there's not much you could really do. Envy managed to answer back on their attack. Yeah, that was a really they nice needed it. and disciplined hold. Not, not, no one is peeking. They're forcing, they're forcing their opponent to have to commit out of a, a position where 1v1s can be isolated, and they're forcing him to commit into a spot where they can all three attack him at once. So just great discipline there, simple basics that everybody needs to, to understand and respect. Play with your team. And... For all of you out there playing matchmaking, without your team, if, if you're in a three v one or a two v one, don't don't give them one v ones. That's how they win the clutch. Anti eco here. Okay, I like they're trying to take this space here in main and looking to force them back. They still don't know where that camera is, by the way. So th that could like it depends on what uh, they end up doing, uh, Vice. But I don't. Okay, he does use the camera. So now they're going to know where that camera is for the next few rounds, which they can actually use to their advantage moving forward. Yeah, it's part of the reason the cage goes up too is because it, well, it suggests that they could cross, but hold that thought. We get a nice jump shorty there from Vice. Doing a bit of extra damage, actually, because MVR decided not to commit here. They did pull all the rotation from C9, but they're not committing, and that means that uh, ooh, Mummy's in a, a bit of a desperate spot. And I think there's a van... No, I don't think there's a vandal actually on the ground, but... There's a real chance here. Three versus three. The spike's gone down, sure, but Tens has got a Sheriff. Yeah, and actually Tens' Sheriff was a uh, tone shifter for Cloud9 on their uh, attack previously. If you recall, they lost that first round, and it was because of the way that he plays the Sheriff. It's almost as if like he's just super comfortable with it. Now he's coming up on the flank. They got two players tucked away in hell. Look for that player also at um, in main to be a problem. Never mind. I was going to say, be a problem. Yeah, right. Not when Tens is involved. Akis, though, had to remove him quickly. They're going to force this issue. They have to push in, but the Spectre shots will spam this one out, and they'll get those kills. Envy yeah. win the pistol and the anti-eco, which was big for them. They needed that to try and get themselves back into this game. They have a long road ahead of them. 
it seems so reliable that C9 get a lot of mileage out of those rounds where they have like a shorty and maybe and tens always will have the sheriff. It's ridiculous, right? It's it's really scary, and that's part of the reason why Reyna is so so dangerous on tens because it just gives him the option to just go absolutely nuclear if he's able to get that first kill, which he <laughs> reliably does seem to on most occasions. So it looks like MV, you know, they're starting out most of these rounds with that B main pressure. We see that C9 try to counter that by having that cam in to get that check of like, are they still here in the mid rounds? And are they actually gearing up for this push or not? And looking for the the recon dot that typically will get shot above you and, and behind you. That's what the servers are trying to do. But MV have discovered that mid is completely for free. There is a turret there towards pizza. Not to see if uh, they can get this pick onto Relics, so this is the, this is a big moment here for C9. Oh, Relics, but that's perfect. Gets the info, doesn't take any damage. I was going to say that. Like, that's just the best possible situation there for Relics now, right? He's going to get cut off, but that's going to give his teammates all the confidence in the world to be prepared for this push. The fight's going to find one. Doesn't get the second one, though, and then the swing comes through. Aegis and Calypso, they connect with kills against Vice and Shinobi, thus leaving B-side completely barren and open as Finesse to actually cause some problems uh, on the flank does manage to pick up Mitch. Tenzo is still going to be alive, and as we say, still going to be a problem. A 3v2, uh, 3v2 as Tenz is approaching here on market with a Leer. Has two Leers still, by the way, so he's freely able to get onto the site, and he's making a lot of noise. Oh my goodness, this is actually going to be a big problem. He gets a kill right here. Oh, no, he, Calypso needed to end that. He needed to shut that thing down. It's all up to Relics here. 15 HP. Is it going to be worth it for him to try and take this? Or does he try and pin them inside of the site, get them to die, make them spend that money? And yeah, he's just looking for exits at this point. Yeah, make sure they both die. No matter what, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen. And if Rose can get some more ult charge out of it, that'd be great. And everyone's going to die. Beautiful. Everyone gets ults. Everyone gets charged. You know, it's great. <laughs> so, so far, so good here for Envy on the second half. However, we will be, after this save round, going into another gun round. So, still a long road ahead for Envy. And this is kind of cool. We didn't really see this too much from C9's attack. C9 were playing a more sort of methodical attack overall, trying to do presence everywhere, the slow creep, trying to find those picks. And here we see Envy, they find a hole in mid. They decide to just explode out of it through market into the B side. But it did actually work out for them. So yeah. that's something that's uh, a scary precedent. I think that gets set. Uh, and maybe we'll see a response from C9 in terms of how they will handle the mid setups. Because yeah. if, if that's something that Envy can reliably go to, you want to try to shut that down in future rounds. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if you guys saw it there for a brief moment. I, or at least I caught it on my screen. It seems like that, that same thunderstorm is attacking Shinobi right now as well. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. I'm just making it up. Uh, but uh, yeah, so disconnect issue. It happens. Uh, we'll get this thing sorted out in a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, a good start for Envy, though, right? Like, way to respond. It, it, it could have gone, like, terribly poorly uh, for them, considering that they're at a huge deficit. But yeah. with each round, uh, Valorant and the, the format and the way that it is, right, the MR12 and that, that whole thing, like, it allows opportunities for these big big comebacks to happen, believe it or not, because of the way that the game functions, utility and everything like that. Ultimate's also giving you a little bit of an advantage to be able to swing around in your favor. Uh, and if they can snowball this to a few more wins, it, it, that'll be... You know, they're, they're right yep. back in this Envy. And, and Cloud9 will have to figure out how they adjust here. Because right now, yeah, you're right. Like, the mid-presence that Envy have been putting out has been enough to give them uh, comfort to push sites uh, in a way that they, like, they know that they don't have to worry too much about tens, and 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 they'll 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 encounter him later. Uh, maybe we see a mix up there, right? Maybe we see a mix up on where they position certain agents to have as much of an impact to try and stop these pushes from happening, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing that that I want to see is I want to see Envy going for that that mid B play. Just I want them to just replicate that round that they found uh, was successful for them. And if that happens, then there's a question for C9 as to whether they take a player off of A yeah. to help deal with that, that mid presence. And if they do that, then that's when the conditioning is starting to really impact the game. And as 
Envy, you can think, ah, well, we know now that we force them to take players off of A, so A is going to be weaker. So if we now yeah. start with A pressure, we're going to start you know, pulling rotations you know, left and right, mm -hmm. and we're going to start controlling the information game more. So that's when you know this 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 starts to really become interesting, and it becomes a battle, uh, like a it's the the chess game between the in-game leaders. True, and that's why I said like you know what do they do to kind of respond to this, right? Like, is the answer going to be to because they have been in that last round. Uh, they put relics there, uh, I believe, because they were like cautious about the fact that there could be a push coming through. Uh, maybe there's just more investment that they're going to have to place in this area now. I don't think relics uses paranoia to try and stop that too. I ended up thinking he, he got popped as soon as he wrapped around the corner. So there is just a, uh, the, the conditioning I think is the best word here. Uh, and, and it's probably one of my favorite terms when, when talking about TAC FPS is because you have a, you have X amount of rounds to try and figure out what are the tendencies of your opponents as they have learned what your tendencies are after previous encounters. Now they've been favoring this B-side a lot. You know how they like to play this. They're not really trying to play into Mitch, right? They're, they're, not, they're not going A, uh, and uh, they're not taking A main, but the moment that they see that opening is available, they're, they're going to go for it. They have the agents to do it as yeah. well, uh, which is, is quite scary uh, for C9, I think. I wonder how they respond, I think, is going to be the most interesting part of this. Right. So, so to that question, that was going to be my next point. So there's a couple options. If, if the mid thing becomes a problem, mm -hmm. then what they can try to do is they can try to invest more in B main. And this is one of the reasons why we're seeing things start out in as this B main control. Yeah. Uh, because if the attackers win B main, then they can just leave one guy there. But And, and it's not about having that to split off of. It's, it's more about preventing the defenders from being able to defend the market push with a crossfire from B main and spawn. Mm -hmm. Because if you have all those positions, it's kind of difficult if you want to get onto the site because you're playing against the time. You want to get straight onto the site as quickly as possible. You don't want to spend time yeah. trying to retake B main as you come out of B, uh, as you come out of market because the rotation from the A defenders is coming through at the same time. So you need to get that spike planted and get any post position, uh, post plant position you can. So a B main take is one option to deal with that where they don't risk playing aggressively around mid. And I think most teams and players don't like doing that. It feels very easy for the attackers to have the advantages mm -hmm. taking mid. The other way that they could try to deal with it is to get more aggressive around A main and actually mm -hmm. put try to like get those flanks happening, get someone into Gelato and then start early rotations. That's another option that they have. I think those are the two main ones Which it before looks going like to make control. they have been doing. They have been sending tens on that route. Uh, he just hasn't been able to get there in time mm -hmm. because I think they know that. So that's the reason why like if they are comfortable with the fact that tens is going to be coming up on the flank, uh, they will then try and push the issue and force it more toward uh, more toward market and, and even uh, back spawn. Yeah, they, man, this is the best part about this game. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You can sit here for hours and hours, and you can like think about like all the different ways that they're going to try and push a site. Like you could theory craft like all these different uh, elements of the game. It gives you a lot of freedom to do so because of the way the agent compositions work. What do they actually have in the moment that they can use to their advantage? Uh, and then how do they play those advantages, or how do they uh, mitigate their disadvantages as well? Right? Like that's always a, an element that you have to kind of factor in. Uh, so yeah, it makes you wonder like where their adjustments are going to come. B has been good for them thus far. Mid has been good for them. Uh, Cloud9 has an opportunity to respond. I, I do wonder if they keep on, like, I, I think we might see C9 in this next round uh, try to take take space on, on B main. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think they want to, they, they need to prevent them from having the freedom to make some moves. Uh, but at that point, it's like, do they just try and see if they could force the issue to happen over toward mid, right? Like maybe like more Cubby, because we haven't seen Cubby even be like that big of a role in this game. Like Cubby Tree in this half has been kind of barren. Not a lot of fights have taken place over there. And this, and this go, goes back to your previous point about the conditioning, because once you, as the attackers, you start to condition the opponents to worry about one thing, as they start making those adjustments, yeah. then you can start saying, oh, well, we expect that that area to be kind of opened up a little bit. And so that's w one of the, I think, possibilities. I think that's that might be the, the look of the, of the second half of the second half. Um, I second think <laughs> from, like from Envy yeah. um, because if there is a successful adjustment for C9 in terms of dealing with the, the mid takes and, and again as mentioned maybe dealing with that is about taking better B main control yeah. we'll have to see um, but if they do get a successful adjustment then it's going to be prime time for Envy to start switching things up and then, then it's the question of how do, do C9 you know do they uh, think that far ahead or do they want to try to um, just, just deal with, react to it as it's happening and, and reacting scary, like because yeah. sometimes being too reactive can uh, kind of 
cause a negative effect, right? When they know that you're being reactive to it, you then are the ones that are in control of like how that match plays yeah. out, which was exactly what Cloud9 was doing to Envy. Like they were in full control. Envy at no point in time, because they only really had one play with Akis's Killjoy. He was just stacked over on B. Like it was the same play that they knew was gonna happen. That once it forced Envy to get off of that, that traditional setup that they had for their Killjoy, they then were just, they were scatterbrained, right? Like they didn't have the placements to try and stop uh, certain plays from happening. Like even thinking back to that one play that Akis was holding the uh, mid market and a uh, vice came through mid, there was an alarm bot there, but he had the presence of mind to like get around the alarm bot. You could just tell that the placement of that particular piece of utility was just not comfortable for Akis. So it wasn't an area that he would normally place that uh, because they, they didn't do it before in previous matches. So they were able to punish it. And then that's in cloud nine, like they're in your head at that point. And also you just have tens destroying faces. It, it's just, it's wild yeah. how C9 uh, dismantled them on, on their attack, man. Yeah, there's just so many things to talk about. I think I think one of the things um, that you mentioned before about like the, the, the timings, that's one of the things about Sage, for example, that's really interesting because mm -hmm. Sage is, like timing is super important in, in attack FPS. Because when we use the, the word rotations, rotation is like two concepts put together, which is timing and positioning, yeah. which are two very familiar con concepts in like basically everything. But in attack FPS, you know, those two ideas, like. Positioning is useless without good time, good timings, and, and vice versa. And so we're talking about having the best rotations or, uh, as attackers and defenders. You're always playing against the clock in that in that yeah. sense. So that's why Sage is really interesting because you know Sage's ice orbs can create and walls create like this this extra delay in these dynamic scenarios that can uh, create a bad timing for a team where they wouldn't necessarily account for it. And and that's what I think is really interesting about Sage and, and why like. You know, we see common uses of certain agents, but when you when you get someone that knows how to use them really, really well, and you get these really high level teams playing, yeah. you get to see these like this actually advanced level of, of taking edges and advantages from from things like that in dynamic situations. Because these players are so dialed in, they intuitively understand the game so well, yeah. they can just carve out these tiny advantages that will win the round. Yeah, I so. love it. It's so awesome. Like. Uh, and, and, and now we're starting to see agents like Killjoy get introduced that also create a little bit of that delay, but it's really just delay. It's not what, what Sage does. There's a reason why Sage is still so very good in these compositions. I know it seems weird that we're talking about Sage here, but <laughs> uh, and it also seems weird that we're filling a lot of time. And it's because we had a player disconnect and he's going to be joining up on Discord in a little bit. So we're really sorry about that, everyone at home. No, the casters do not have control uh, of the game and when it starts. Obviously, we want to get back into the action as much as you do. Uh, so for now, join us as we have a podcast about theory crafting the compositions in Valorant, which honestly, if you love Valorant as much as we do, then you know you should actually be pretty down with this because this is exactly the kind of conversation that you that you'd be seeking out on a regular basis. Uh, and and this is also the because uh, we're actively going to be able to see some of these problems being solved uh, by Cloud9 potentially as we get ready for this game to start up here in a moment. Envy have kind of figured out ways to abuse mid and take control of that. Cloud9 now needs to find a way to respond. They don't have the agents as we were highlighting before like sage that creates that stall with the slow orbs it's the reason why like when you if you play matchmaking with your friends at home uh you will will some things to look out for it's like if you're playing against a sage that like throws out you know slow orbs like they're candy oh man you can abuse that so hard because that oh, there's yeah. that that element is just gone now. Like they don't have that. They don't have that disruption. Uh, and and that's something that right now, and th in the context of this match, Cloud9 doesn't necessarily have. They're gonna have to figure out how to stop this. We're gonna jump back into the action finally, folks, uh, as we get ready for Cloud9 to response. They have lost three in a row here in Envy, uh, despite what happened on the attack. Have looked great so far. Yeah, and this is a save round, so this isn't the kind of gun round adjustment that we were talking about just yet. So. Um, we'll see though if C9 can with, I mean they're always deadly in rounds such as this, can do some damage, but it's a f very hard hitting and fast moving attack into the B side coming in from Envy. So this round is basically shut down. When you get the spike down in a round like this and you're up against a team that has only pistols and no utility, it's pretty much over. And we'll see that Caboose is just on a victory lap here. Beautiful fragging. I think that's 4k for him. He's looking for the ace. Maybe. Go I'm for it, Caboose. Mistaken. Believe in yourself. You can accomplish anything. Ah, well. 
than Calypso. I had. Calypso. Calypso takes it away from him. So one quick point just to add, as we go into the next gun round, that we didn't mention is that there's two types of team. There's a team that once they find something successful in the attack will keep doing it until the opponent re adjusts because sometimes the opponent's adjustment will be bad mm -hmm. and then you'll keep winning rounds and you can win a game like that. Because they haven't figured out how to adjust properly. And, and sometimes you'll get a team that will be like, that works, we have them fearful of this, let's just switch up to something else in our playbook. So the question is also, which which one is Envy going to go for? I mean, double off. Yeah, and Dang look it. at this here. Double op, but the reason why I think they're able to do that is because they shifted tens over toward mid to handle that aggression. But Envy, they are so comfortable with this, they're actually going to play out A main and take control of this. Oh, man, they did exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, and he's on the edge of the dark cover too, so that's I really loved it. Th this is great. This is, I just love tens because... He, he has the confidence to do stuff like this. You wouldn't necessarily put a lot of players in a position like this, but Tens is, and he's getting a lot of info. Around the one minute mark is about the, the pacing that we've seen where they take mid. And you can see that's when Tens goes for a deeper peak. He gets traded out, but we'll see if that, that works out in their favor or not. There are very few players that are built like Tens right now yeah. in North American Valorant that you can send into an angle like that to be a disruptor. So while they were getting a lot of information at A main and forced uh, some rotations to happen over there, uh, they because of the way that Tens played and gave them so much information, now they kind of have to rethink what they're going to do here to take this site. And C9 already droned A main. So C9, the timing on the drone was a little bit too soon. They were expecting a rotation immediately after the Tens engagement in mid. And so they don't really have the info as to what's happening. And in fact, Sova's pushing away from the site towards spawn. So they are kind of relying on Vice very desperately, and he's going to get traded out. All right, well, there it is. So now they're going to go in for this push. Now we have a TP that happens. Is Shinobi's going to be in sight now. There also was that TP below. Relic's going to be on the outside, inside of the dark cover. Spike is now down, but here comes the Paranoia. I believe they may be, they did not play the Paranoia out yet as well as Relic's. He's just going to be beaten up on the outside. Akis is going to swing this one, ends up getting the kill. Ooh, so the shock dots from Shinobi. Can he find it? They killed the Odin. No, it's not really good in those engagements. Oh, oh. Envy. They're hitting hard in this one. That was a really nice round from them. C9 just read, misread the pacing of Envy. And as I say, it comes down to that drone that they sent after they yeah. lost tens in mid. And I feel bad for tens because he gets the kill, but I think he didn't get the... Um, he wasn't able to phase out of there afterwards, which is yeah. The one play of the was the phase out, not the uh, not the absorb, right? Yeah. Like taking siphoning that health is good for him individually, but for the broader context of the team, if he got out of there, then he causes a problem for them. Also, uh, a credit though to Envy, they traded out every single kill that yeah. happened. They traded it out instantly. We might see that mid stuff again now from them, actually, as they're up against a save round. They've been liking the B splits on the save round, but actually they're committing everything into B main here. And there's already a push on A main for C9, but will they get there to this push in time? I don't think that they will, as they kiss with the first entry. They're going to swing this one now. Looking to push this back. Shinobi's going to be by himself. He's tagged up. There is going to be some support, and then Tenz is now there on the flank. So th while all that's been going on, they actually gave up a lot of space. So many players in Envy are going to be invested inside of B main. It's almost as if they kind of just have to go for it at this point because now they're going to get surrounded. But the thing is, they do not have the weapons to cause a disruption. And I don't think Envy would have played it out like this had they known that C9 had those weapons. Tens is all the way out here at the top of that uh, catwalk on their side, on the Envy side of the map. And Envy, they're just playing this one out slowly. Yeah, I love this. If you feel like you've missed on, out on your timing and you're expecting to get flanked, you can just pause and see if the opponent misreads your pace and then oversteps, you punish it, and then you keep going. And that's kind of where we're at in this round. They don't want to give up any kills here, Envy, and they're a little bit worried for the mid flank. You can see they were just checking for that, and now they're going to re-exec into the site, and it should go pretty well here. They have the utility advantage. There goes the flash, clearing the close angles. Smart. Akers looks right, the rest of his teammates look left, and it's a beautiful coordination. That was a great way to play this round, recognizing the situation and not overplaying their hand. But tens is tens. Is tens, <laughs> tens you know, is alive. Always good for one. Yeah, he gets a gun, and he also gets that trusty Vandal that he's been lights out with throughout the uh, entirety of this day. Playing this angle, everyone just has to fear Tens at this point, right? There's like no ifs, ands, or buts about him. You have the entire might of this squad needing to put their attention to kill him. 
which they successfully do. Five rounds in a row that Envy have been able to come back. They're within two of Cloud9. If you would have told me that this game would have gone like this, where it's so attack heavy, I wouldn't have believed you, given how <laughs> these teams played before. Yeah, and, and they're, they're, both teams are doing it with their own style, with their own pace, with their own sort of mind games and conditioning, and and it, it's just it's just another feature of Valorant that's really cool that the, the half, like each half can looks very differently because of agent compositions and and stylistic decisions. Akers looking to toss a Nano Swarm deep on Catwalk to deny info there. We've got three towards B. So this is something we were talking about earlier. Tens is pushing A main. This is also something we were talking about earlier. And this is the gun round, and he sees nothing here. And there goes the lockdown into the B site. So all hands on deck here towards B for C9. Yeah, and this is going to be the push, and a little bit of the commotion is going to happen as the Hunter's Fury comes out, but they're going to back up. Neural Theft now is going to reveal the location uh, of the members of C9, and Tens is going to get called out. That's the reason why FNS was able to get that kill. But they're going to reset this here. They're going to reset. They saw where the bodies were. Now they're going to start making their way over toward A. That alarm bot is going to give them the intel that this is going to be a full swing. Also, you got yourself that little bot there to help you out. Both players from C9 are there. Aegis watching the flank. I do admire the fact that they're still putting a lot of respect for C9. Despite what we have here with two players left alive, you know, you may think you get a lurk or something along that effect. But instead, it's just going to be Cloud9. I think they realize this is not going to be one that they can win. They have to concede this. NV will go in within one here. So there's a lot of like really smart stuff that is happening right now. I think from Envy's side of things, and I'm pretty, I'm hoping that this is what they thought. So otherwise, I make, I'm going to make them sound a lot smarter than they are. Um, <laughs> I'm knowing that there's like all these alts available. Um, you know, trying to get that exchange out of their opponents, making it representing a heavy B attack. Whilst also we talked about the fact that because they've been so B and mid heavy, they've also conditioned C9 to feel like they can just push tens on A main a lot. Mm -hmm. So they they have all this threat. They know that they're forcing a rotation. So if it isn't the case that they just get super easy entries, where of course you would take the B site, they know that the timing of the rotations from A is going to be a lot faster on their flank. So they can play against that after they make it look like a B hit. They pulled all the players to B. The flank comes to them. They deal with the flank, as you as you highlighted. Tens just is in too deep and of a position. that was partially because of the neural theft. And, and that tells them how deep Tens is also tells them that the run to the site is basically clear. So they get to play off of that, those mind games that they previously conditioned into their opponent. And look at the looky looky here. We got focus on A. Does Tens actually go for this though? So they're sending a lot of utility out in this direction. It is going to give C9 an indication that now the the tone has shifted a little bit. Shinobi's drone flying through this will show them that the cipher's there. So there's a lurk duty, but. There is going to be uh, Killjoy, uh, so Akis out toward the mid, and then Calypso is also going to be playing mid as well. They're spread out a bit more here. They're not investing that much into either side of the map. They're really just not giving uh, Cloud9 like a clear indication as to where they're going. This is such a, a big moment here because MV know that C9 have almost every single ultimate available. Yeah. And just missing the Hunter's Fury, but the lockdown exists. So you want to be really cautious about how you attack because you don't want to commit yourself uh, into all of the ults. You want to try to bait the ults out and make them waste those ultimates. So we'll see if they can do that. It's part of the reason why they're playing fairly slow here. They're trying to get as much info as they can. And there goes the Killjoy ult. And they are taking mid at the same oh, time. They They've got, got two kills out of that. Oh, no, I think they're okay with that. They got two kills and Caboose dies, but they know exactly where Mitch is with the op. Now Vice is going to be hanging on the back here. They need something to deal with this. But Vice gets the info from that camera. So he sees them over toward mid. And he has two areas that he has to focus on, but he's going to push outside of the dark hover, manage to collect one, and then he's going to just disappear inside of that. They have no choice but to go into the site and set this one down. But while that's going on, Akis comes in through the mid, ends up picking up two kills there, thus leaving Vice all alone with an op on the defender side. Spawn, no options to get inside as well. Envy, you know, it looked like it could have gotten a little worrisome there for a moment, but Akis getting two, that, that was just an individual play that Envy really needed. 
Yeah, this was this was so it's kind of heartbreaking for C9 again because you see that they have all these ults and it's almost like I'm like I I was worried for them because I was hoping for their uh, sake that they're able to find a way to get uh, get the advantage from them. But mm -hmm. Envy did such a good job in you know baiting all of that out, really representing an attack that's heavy towards A, and then just having all the position. If you were to rewind this this as that ult uh, Killjoy ult goes down towards A, and you look at the positioning of Envy, they've completely out rotated. C9, and at that point, the positioning was so favorable for Envy, they're never losing the round. Even though there was a lot of players left at that point, the positioning basically was just way too strong for Envy. So they're looking like they're going to take this this map right now because it's C9 don't good. have a, they don't seem to have a way to to stop any of this. This is literally the position that Envy found themselves in in their half, <laughs> uh, where they had no idea what the response could possibly be, where the adjustments are. And they also, in that round two, I believe, got the Empress and the uh, Lockdown ult out as well. So if you're Envy, you're quite satisfied with that because you took away two big ults, right? One that prevents you from being able to take sights and the other one that just makes tens like a literal god. So there's a lot of value to be able to take out of this. And now they're going to put their attention once again here toward the B site. As they look to push this one in, the Paranoia is also going to be used. They're going to take the space, close the door down. Caboose is going to fly this one out. But wait a minute, Shinobi ends up getting the kill. So they lose two players there in that whole scuffle. As C9 now looking to retake this site. But FNS is going to be lingering on the cubby on the outside. They'll get popped by that classic from Tens. Now they're just going to be playing their angles. They don't have a, a really pretty post-plant positioning here, DDK. Yeah, this is They're definitely pinned. difficult. Being all the way at the back of the site is not ideal. There's even a cage left, left for Vice. That could be really useful here. We'll have to see how he utilizes that to their advantage. Trying to make their way in. It's going to be tough, though, because it is a 2v2. Angles are covered fairly well between Mummy and Calypso at the back of the site. The operator really strong in these spots. Recon and Dart is available, but wants to keep that gun out. There's a swing onto Calypso. Now it's all on Mummy as he pulls out that Recon Dart. Oh, the flick misses on Vice now. The Sheriff has to do the job. There it is. Three connections on the Mitch. Ah! Oh! for Mummy, and he's going to clutch it for Envy. And that's 11 rounds for them. C9, that looked like one of the best chances that we've seen for them, and it's it's not gone well. No, it has not. And now Envy have the lead, first time. This the only time they had the lead was at the beginning of this game when they <laughs> won uh, Pistol, and I think it was Anti-Eco. And then since then, it, it was just absolute domination from Cloud9. Envy on this attack have been so stellar from the beginning, right? From their pistols all the way until now. If we show the scoreboard here for a moment. Look at that, man. That is crazy, dude. They've managed to win all of these rounds coming back. Oh, I can't believe it. What a game. And it's not over just yet. The buy does suck. Uh, I mean, for a C9, it's, it's a half buy. They managed to, I think they got one fa Phantom in the mix there, so that's yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Three Sheriffs, so definitely can't count them out to do some damage. And they're looking for that being main aggression, trying to keep the information alive that they swapped the drone, trying to destroy the, the drone there to deny as much info as possible. It's okay to get one of you tagged up with that drone, as long as it doesn't see anything else. Now, Envy, after you know winning this battle in that B main control, we talked about this before, they've often go, gone into a mid-take, into a market explosion, once they have that B main superiority. C9 are responding to that. Look how many players they've stacked at B. We'll have to see like if, if Envy throw them for a loop here, because again, Envy know also that th that's how they've been playing this, these rounds out. So, looks like they may go straight into it once again. They're just gonna make contact, they just make contact. Doesn't get the second kill, though. Finesse is going to wipe that one clean. Now, they don't know how many players are necessarily going to be here, but they are hearing these footsteps on the outside. Three players located here toward mid. This is kind of giving uh, C9 exactly oh. what they what they want. Like, they knew that they were going to be doing this. But Calypso's there on the flank. He's got one. He's got two. Maybe he's going to find himself a third one here as well. The player goes in for the challenge, but Relics cleans it up. The time, though, there's only 10 seconds to get a spike down. Oh, there's no one to stop it, though, here for C9. There was a moment in mid there if Sova has his recon dart for C9, that would have been huge. But cooldown. Oh, nice. That's Winnable. a nasty shot. And that brings it to a two versus two. C9 need this round so uh, bad. They just saw them. All of them were going to be outside, so they have some freedom to push in. But while that ping did go through, Akis actually is going to push inside past generator. They're hearing the footsteps. They know exactly where they're going to be. Akis hits one shot, looking for the second. Big win for Envy's Akis. Now Envy are going to be at match point. 
oh, after wow. a dismal first half, they have managed to win all of the attacking rounds on their side, DDK. Ten in a row. That's so unfortunate for C9 too, because we had two rounds there that were very, very close. We had the the uh, the one v one on the B side previously, and then this one, the two v two, where we saw C9 they were in a position to isolate the player on the site there to get that two v one. But as you say, able to Akers was able to get in front of that that neural theft. They didn't understand that he was in this position. Good spray control, and that's it. And like he charged quickly enough so that in case they had a thought that he was going to be hiding inside, like they were, ne they never heard him. They, they never got the footsteps and the sounds. Oh man, all right, well we do have a full gun buy here for Cloud9. They've actually, they're, they're placing their Cypher in mid now instead, putting the cam on pizza as, as well as a trip there. So, you know, that's, that's definitely an adjustment. They've kind of given up on trying to contest for B main info. We can see the Sova drone there and they'll maybe rely on some of the recon dots, but other than that, they feel like there's more value from having Cypher's util in mid. So that just goes to show, you know, Envy have been getting a lot of value out of their mid aggressions. And it's been really hard for C9 to know what that means. Is it a spawn push, a market push? Are they faking it out? Yeah, like, because you can go so many different directions from there. It, it's not cut and dry. Okay, Vice. Ooh. Gonna try and level things off in their favor. And that is a big kill as well, because now they don't have run it back. Uh, Akis does have this lockdown, though. So let's see. Once this lockdown is uh, placed, though, they're going to know exactly where it is. And I, I would imagine that Vice will be able to shoot it through yeah. this wall. Will he realize and try? Uh, yeah, right. I mean, he sees the source of where that lockdown is, but he's going to be more focused on what he has to do inside of here. He doesn't have any space to be able to move around. They're stuck. Oh, they're no. pinned inside. Oh, no. They're pinned. He got two players. They know exactly where they're going to be. It's free push. Free push. They have their hands open. Oh, no. They're going to turn the corner. They're going to get them both. Oh, this is so devastating, but they got to get the spike down. And now they are. Wait. I don't think this they got it down in time. They didn't get it down in time. Oh, oh no. They no. didn't. They didn't get it down in time. Everything worked. And they're losing bodies? Oh my goodness! Oh, so close. Oh my goodness. Two players at the back of the site detained, and they still can't win the round because of time, because they waited it out. They stalled it out for so long. What? Oh, and you know what? You know what? I have to say, like, that was actually awesome to see that Vice was standing there with the operator. Even though he was tagged by the drone, he was just standing there, standing there. Because, and they're not, they didn't want to swing into it. They knew exactly what he had in his hands, an operator. They didn't want to give him that pick. And he waited out there as long as possible. And he and they took the detain. And they still and they won the round by the slimmest of margins. But they can't. Re that's not replicable, Golden Boy. They no, they gotta they gotta not. find other ways to win these rounds. I mean, partially the reason why the detain was needed in that instance was because of the fact that they lost Caboose so early at the start. Vice with the kill, the run it back, that information, it's all going to be gone. Now they're going to be shifting their attention here toward A main once again. And they have found some success here in the past. We haven't quite seen them uh, go full for it often. It's been more of that mid play that they've had, and hence the reason why Shinobi sending a drone out mid. This does tell them that they're not going out in this direction, but Envy, they've had the freedom to go wherever it is they want to go. And now with that drone out, they're actually going to shift things up and go yeah. back over toward mid. That drone actually did sell a rotation towards the A site because that's not been typical for Envy to drone out that A main position. So it's uh, so normally been towards the B side of the map. And this is one of those mix-ups. In, in one of the most important moments, what could be map one, a map one victory, Envy are finally pressuring towards tree. But there is an alarm bot there, I believe. So this is information. This is the benefit of Killjoy. And back into the mid control, we see the tripwise there as well. Again, C9 are a bit better set up in terms of their mid round info to follow the action here of their opponents. There's that paranoia to slow things down. There's the rotation from C9 through spawn. And there's a rotation back oh from Envy to God. the A side. They're pushing and pulling them all over the place. But there's 10 seconds again. They're, they're leaving this down to the wire. This is not going to be a problem that they can po possibly solve. Akis needs to get onto the site here. He's going to have a few seconds to do so. Mitch is going to get killed in the back. But have they gotten the spike down in time? They do, and the Hunter's Fury doesn't connect. He's going to miss the second one as well. Maybe land the third one, but no one's going to be around. Now C9 need to play retake. But Caboose does manage to pick up the kill. The flash comes in. Shinobi gets the kill against Caboose, making this into a 2v2. And there's similar health pulls on both sides here as both of the uh, Sovas are going to be tagged up. Vice, though, he's going to be inside of the tree area here. Shinobi up on top of the rafters as Vice swings this. He's going to try and block this thing off. No vision has been gained. Mummy gets a big shot there. Now it's just going to be left up to Vice in a 1v2 and he can't do it as Envy will be able to breathe.